My, what a great time of praise and worship that was. Amen. And I'm telling you, we were not inhibited by anything. Amen. Except our own, our own emotions. And so I pray that God has spoken to your heart. He's encouraged you as we get ready here in just a little bit to partake in the Lord's Supper. What I wanted to do today, though, is, is since basically almost the beginning of the year, God has laid on my heart a, a, a longing for things of, of my own personal life with Him and the life of the church and the life of First Baptist West here, for us to ex- experience a freshness or even a revival, if you will, without having the so-called revival week, my desire is for revival to have taken place here at First Baptist West that we can not necessarily just keep going through the motions. Not just do it because that's what we've done or just doing anything, but that we would have a freshness to it. We've talked about the, the, the church being immature, if you will, and not immature if we're childish, which I'm going to be preaching in a couple of weeks, but that we could be fresh and new and have the faith of a child and, and let, every, let all the experiences that we have in worship and we have in our own personal devotion, let those be fresh and new every single day that we don't just go through the motions. Those years, all those years that I was coaching, and for any of you that are watching, I was a girls basketball coach for 17 years before I became a full-time pastor. And one of the things that I, I, I would, that would just always bother me, and, and, and even in my own personal as a coach, I, didn't, I never wanted to see any of my teams just out there going through the motions. Every game, man, I wanted it to be new. I wanted it to be fresh. I wanted them to give everything they had. And, and that's what I expected as their coach. I would give everything that I had in that time for those games. I, I, I didn't want mo- just going through the motions. And the same thing, I, I desired that in my own personal life. I, I don't ever want to just be going through the motions in my personal time with God. I don't want to just mark off the box. Well, I did my Bible reading. I did my devotion. Check, check, go. Let's move on with our day. I want my time with God to be fresh and new. And the same thing for the church. I don't want these worship services to just become old hat. Man, I want them to be fresh. I want them to be exciting. Every time you walk in the doors, I want you to feel God's presence. And and that's been my desire this whole year. Well, the same thing as I shared with you. The same thing goes with a lot of things that we read in Scripture. We talked about how we can say something so many times that it kind of loses its intensity, losing its power even inside the church. And today as we partake of the Lord's Supper, I, I've shared with you, if you've been, been uh, here at any point in time and we talked about the Lord's Supper, you know that I, I've said and I believe with all my heart, this is one of the best services we get to have this side of heaven. Man, when we get to observe the Lord's Supper, man, it's not, it's, it's a whole lot more than just taking a boyfriend and, and juice and moving on. Man, this is an intimate, blessing, special time if we'll just take it that way. And so as we take the Lord's Supper later on, I, I want us to take it in that way. Because the thing that I want us to understand is that freshly today, before we partake of the Lord's Supper, I want you to remember what Jesus did. Because I think sometimes even in the church, if we're not careful, we can get to the point and say, well, what did Jesus do? Well, he died for my sins. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so when we literally say, what did Jesus do? Folks, listen to me. We need to remember, and especially as we're getting ready to partake of the Lord's Supper, Jesus died for my sins. Wow. What an amazing thing that is. Amen. It's not just, oh yeah, he died for my sins. Oh my goodness, no. Be fresh in the idea of what he's done and why he actually did it. Because Jesus died for my sins. Why? Because I was lost. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. So we've all sinned. So Jesus had to die for that. And so when we get ready to partake of the Lord's Supper, then we also know that the wages of that sin is death. Folks, listen to me. Jesus Christ died on the cross for us because we were lost. And if we were to die and leave this world, then we would be eternally lost and separated from God. That Jesus Christ died for me, who was a sinner, and now 
I am been saved because the wages of my sin was death. Well, I want you to take your Bibles as we look at these two things. Remember what Jesus did. Let's look in the book of Luke chapter 22. Got it right this time in the first service. I had it written 19. And man, I was like, I don't think that's right. Man, I looked everywhere. It is 22. All right, we're right. These guys check me, double check me on this one. Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20. Let's go ahead and stand in honor of God's word. And you at home, please join us as we look into this text of scripture. <clears throat> the Bible says here, when the hour had come, he, Jesus, sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will no longer eat, it, eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me. And he took the bread... He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them and said, this, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you and I thank you for the blessing you've given us. Thank you, God, for this, this worship time that we've just gotten to experience. And Father, I pray that your, your spirit would move here and in all those hearts that are watching this live stream service. And God, as we prepare ourselves to partake of the Lord's Supper here in just a little bit, that God, you would you just, you just move in us. Refresh us. Give us a new vision for this. Lord, let it not just be something we do, but oh Lord, let it be a very special, special time. We love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What I want to look at here today is the idea of Jesus Christ dying on the cross because we are sinners. We are lost and the wage of my sin. The result of my sin was that I was going to die. The result is that you were going to die. And my friends, if any of you here are watching this on the live stream, if any of you are apart from Jesus Christ, you are going to die spiritually. You are already dead. The Bible says that he has come to give us life, that we are not, that he didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might have eternal life. And so we are condemned in our sin, and this is what the scripture says. But what I want to look at today is that we are remembering when we participate in the Lord's Supper. What are we remembering? Well, the first thing that he tells us in this text is Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper right there that evening. The thing that we realize is that he basically is giving us his body. So the first element of the Lord's Supper is the bread. The bread is a representation. Now listen to me. It is a representation, not an actual literal thing. When we take of the bread, we are not literally eating Christ's flesh. We are taking a representation of uh, that we are doing it in remembrance of him. So we see that we understand that it was the body and it was the body that was given. Jesus said, take it, this is my body. This is the representation of my body, which was given for you. It was the physical sacrifice the Bible talks about in the Old Testament that there was required every year a physical sacrifice that was given. Jesus said that it is my body that is given to you. His body in place of mine. Can I share something with you? Listen. Jesus gave his body. It was not taken. Jesus gave it over. It was not stolen. When Jesus was there, and you remember when they came to arrest him, Jesus had the authority to not let them arrest him. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite parts of the scripture, man, shows the power of Jesus. You remember when they came and they were going to arrest him and they were feeling all their, they were feeling their oats and they were feeling good about themselves, thinking, whoo, we're going to do this. And you remember they said, hey, are you Jesus? And you remember what Jesus told them? I am. And you remember what, whoa, listen to me. You remember what happened when he said, I am? They all fell down at the very power of the spoken word of Jesus declaring himself to be God. Folks, listen to me. They fell down. They could not arrest Jesus that night unless Jesus gave himself over to them. 
He said, you have no authority over me. I am giving and what I give, I give freely. Listen to me. Jesus' body was given to us. It was the perfect sacrifice. And here's why he gave it. He gave his body in the place of mine. And he gave his body in the place of you. Because listen to me. I had to give my body to be sacrificed. Because the wages of my sin is death. The wages of your sin is death. And you must have a sacrifice given to you. And it's not your body, it's His. He said, I give my body. And I gave it freely. He said, this, this body that I gave for you. So it's Jesus' body. And what makes that such a big deal? Here's why this... Please understand. I, I, I want us to really grasp today. Man, and, and let this be fresh in our heart. Why was it such a big deal? This big deal was, folks, listen to me. The cross was no easy task. Amen? The cross was no easy task. It was not something that people looked forward to. It wasn't something that people just did. Listen to me. It was a very heinous act. It was the most cruel and vile form of punishment known to man at that time. It was only reserved for those who were the most vile, hated criminals. As a matter of fact, it was such a, a terrible thing. It was so bad that the Romans declared that a Roman citizen, no matter what act they had performed, they could not be crucified. It was too cruel for them to do that to a citizen of their own. That's how bad it was. My friends, listen to me. It was a big deal when he said, my body, my body that I give over to you, I am going to the cross and this is no easy task. It is my body that's going to take the place of your body. It is my body that's going to be hanging on the cross. It's going to be whipped. That's going to be having the beard pulled. It's my body that's going to have the crown of thorns placed on it. It's my body that's going to have the nails driven into to my feet and my hands. It's my body that's going to have the spear that's driven through the side. It is my body that's going to die. It is my body that's going to be put in the tomb. I give this body to you. So my friends, listen to me. Today, when we get ready and we take that wafer, and man, it, it's just a little tiny piece of, of wafer there. But when we put it into our mouth, please, would you please remember, this is a representation of the body that was given for you in your place. That suffered what you should have suffered. That took upon it what you should have taken up, what you should have had taken upon you. And it was his body because of you. And it was his body because of me. So we see the bread is the first representation. The second one is the juice. The juice is the blood. The juice is, G is a representation of Jesus' blood. And he says here, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Now why is that such a big deal? Because again, the blood is the symbol of life. Jesus was saying, I am giving to you my life. My blood is being spilled, not yours. It is my, my life that will drain out of my body. It's my life that I'm turning over for you. The Bible tells us in Levit Leviticus 17, 14, it says this. For it is the life of all flesh. Its blood sustains its life. Therefore, I said to the children of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any flesh, for the, it, for the life of all flesh is its blood. So what Jesus was saying, he said, this blood, this is the representation of my very life, my very existence is now being poured out for you. Because as Jesus said, it is the blood that's the symbol of life. It is the supreme offering. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for a friend. That is the great sacrifice Jesus was saying, I am giving you the supreme offering to God. Christ being perfect, poured out his blood as the ultimate atoning sacrifice. Blood had to be shed, and Christ was pouring it out for us. Now, not only that, listen to me, not only is the blood a symbol of life, but it's Jesus' blood. Jesus' blood proved that a life had been given and a debt had been paid. He said this, I'm not asking you. I'm not asking you to do this. I'm not asking you to give your life. I'm not asking you to pour out any blood. I'm not asking you to sacrifice anything. As a matter of fact, my friends, listen to me. Salvation for you and me is absolutely free. 
But please understand, please don't sit out here. Please don't sit at home thinking this is such not such a big deal because it's free. Listen to me. It is absolutely free for us, but it costs Jesus his very life. So please understand what he means by this. It is my blood, not your blood. He doesn't ask me to shed blood. He doesn't ask me to do any of this. It's his precious blood, the perfect lamb of God who loved us so much that he was willing to come down to this earth and pour out his life blood. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9, 22, it says, and according to the law, Almost all things are purified with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. There must be blood. Must be blood that purifies our lives. And Jesus said, I'm giving my blood to you. I'm not asking yours. I'm giving my blood. And the last thing I want to look at very quickly on this part is there's power in the blood. Amen? Oh, don't we sing that song? There's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Don't we say it? There's what? Power. Power. There's power power in the blood. Listen to me. This is a very powerful thing that Jesus shed out for me. Why is there power in the blood? What makes the blood so powerful? Well, the first thing is it washes away my sins. Amen? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Man, you can be good. You can, be, you can give money. You can be a, a, a moral, upstanding person. You can do everything you want. But my friends, we have all sinned. And the wages of that sin is death. But what can wash that sin away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. My friend, that's how powerful the blood is. It washes all that sin away from me. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 7. He says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood, listen to me, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Man, it takes that darkness away. It takes that that awfulness away. It takes that, that evilness away. And all those sins that we've ever committed, that we're committing now, or that we will ever commit, they're all just washed away from us. Oh, again, what can wash away my sins? Oh, come on, Baptist Church. What can wash away my sins? Folks at home, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There's power in that blood. But not only is there power to be washing away my sins, but to redeem us. To actually redeem us back to God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9, 12, Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. Did you hear that? Not with goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Do you get what it says here? To be redeemed, Jesus could have said, you know what, I'm going to come down here, I'm going to get the perfect goat. I'm going to get the perfect lamb. As a matter of fact, for all of you that show animals, he said, I would have taken the grand champion of show. And I could sacrifice that goat for you or that lamb for you. He said, but no, I'm not going to do that. I will sacrifice my own blood. Not the blood of an animal, not the blood of another person, but my blood, for the redemption of man, that we can be redeemed back to God. And the third thing, very quickly, is to have access to God. Woo, hey, this is something, folks. If, hey, listen, if you're not getting excited and you're not getting pumped up right now and you're not ready to do this, I think you need to do this like I always tell you. Man, check, see if you've got a heartbeat, amen? Because this is exciting stuff, not because I'm preaching it, because it's the Word of God. But we get to have, listen to me, Woo! We get to have access to God. We get to go to Him. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, 19, Therefore, brethren, having boldness. Woo! Listen, having what? Boldness. The boldness to go before God Himself. Do you realize that an Old Testament person couldn't go to God? As a matter of fact, they could only see the very back side of God. Less what would happen to them. They die. He said, you can come with boldness to that throne. 
having to enter the holiest by what? The blood of Jesus. You can't go to God without the blood of Jesus. You can't be saved without the blood of Jesus. You can't be redeemed without the blood of Jesus. You can't be made whole again without the blood of Jesus. You have to have the blood. The last thing I want to close here, my, my timer is about to go off here. You have access to God, but yet, listen, He did all of this for you. For you. For me. Folks, that ought to mean something. When we partake the Lord's Supper here in about two minutes, that ought to mean something. He did this for me. Can I tell you this? I, I want to close with this thought. Let us not forget that He did, that everything He did, the being born, to coming down from heaven, to be born of a virgin, to grow up in this world, to walk around and teach and to heal, to then go and be beaten and ridiculed and mocked and to be hung on a cross and have the nails driven into his hands and his feet, to put the prayer, crown of thorns on his head, to, to, to be hung on that cross and have that, 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 that spear shoved through his side, to be taken down off that cross and to be put into a tomb. He didn't do that for himself. Do you understand? Listen to me. Do you understand that Jesus gained nothing from the cross? He gained nothing. Because can I tell you this? He was still God whether he went to the cross or not. He's still God whether you believe in him or not. He's still God whether you receive him or not. He's still God no matter what we do. He is still God. So he did it not for himself, not that he could be more powerful, not that he could prove himself to be more mightier than the things of this world. He did it so that he could redeem us for me. That's why he died on the cross, my friends. Let us, let you, let me, let none of us, let you at home, do not forget. And that's why he said, do this in remembrance of me. Remember what I did for you. Remember what I did for you. And each time he said it, take this body, take this bread that I have given for you. Take this juice, which is representation of my blood, which I had done for you. For you. My friend, today, if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't need to take this. This won't save you. You, you, need, you need Jesus more than you need a wafer and a juice. Because you don't have anything to remember. You don't have anything to honor Him for. How you, we honor Him first is by giving our life and our hearts over to Him. God, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save me. God, I realize that I'm a sinner and I have no hope apart from You. You died on the cross. You bled, shed Your blood for me. And God, it's through You and only You. Jesus, it's through You and only You. Can I receive salvation that I can go to God? Man, you need that today. Man, if you're home and you're feeling empty and you feel like there's something missing in your life, I'm here to tell you Jesus Christ is your answer. You need to come to Jesus. My friend right here, maybe some of you need to come to Jesus because he did it for you. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I know that, I, I know that I'm saved, but man, there's just been something in my life. Man, I've gotten to, off track. I've gotten to other things that I, I, I've been focused on and Man, the newness of worship just hasn't been there for me. And it, it's just become, become something I do. My, even my daily time, just something I do. Then can I tell you today that you have a chance right here, right now to say, God, forgive me of that. Come back to be number one in my life. God, restore back to me the joy of your salvation in my life. God, come back to me. Bring me back to you. And he'll take you today. Man, he'll refresh you up. He'll make this mean something. He'll make this the best worship service you've had in a long time. Not because we had great music and not because the preaching was so-and-so. But that it was Jesus working in your life today. Would you do that? Folks at home, would you turn to Christ right now? Would you, would you let him back in to be number one in your life? Would you serve him? And then be reminded of what he did for you. Wow. I'm going to ask the praise team to come back up. As we're stepping now into a time of invitation, now here's what I want you to do during this next few moments. They're going to come and they're going to lead us in a song to prepare us to get ready for the Lord's Supper. What I'm going to ask you to do is I want you, and at home, join us. 
I want you to hear in just a moment when I say amen, I want you to stand and I want you to sing with us. Or I want you to begin to pray, God, restore back to me the joy of, my sal of your salvation. Or right there where you are, say, God, I know that I'm lost and I desperately need you in my life. I want, I want, to, I want to receive you into my heart. Now listen, I'm going to be down front for anyone that's here, but if you're at home and you need to visit with somebody about this, man, you call our church office right now and there'll be somebody there to visit with you because we want everyone to know where they stand with Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you come today and speak to our hearts? Lord, I just pray that you, if there's someone here that needs you today, that, Father, you would call them and they would turn to you. Father, I pray for anyone at home that feels empty and lost that God before this time is over, they would call upon your name. And maybe call the church here, Lord, and speak to somebody. God, let this be a time of decision. But then let it be a time of praise as we prepare ourselves to get ready for the Lord's Supper. And Father, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand with me as we get ready to sing?